every time we start talking about job openings, it's the first thing most people do is you start rattling off all the offensive play callers and you go, okay, Mm -hmm. does he call plays and will he call plays for me? Half Mm -hmm. of the, half of the teams in the, in the NFL, in the playoffs that are playing this weekend do not have offensive play caller head coach. Half of them. It's either a defensive coach or just a coach who a more CEO, right? Like Harbaugh or Tomlin. Sure. Uh, And, Everything you're saying about some of these guys, like what you said about Kyle Shanahan, who is the offensive play caller, what you said about him as his best quality was not his offensive play calling necessarily, right? Yeah. So do you think, are we over, like all the McVay guys, all the Shanahan guys, are we almost to some degree overvaluing offensive play callers right now? Of, of course we are. Of course. And But that's because that's the only thing that people can see and really evaluate these guys on is – how many points is 49er offense scoring? Man, that running game looks good. Look at all that motion he uses. Oh, my God. I, mean, that's, I want a coach that does that. They don't see all this stuff behind the scenes. They don't see all the stuff that truly – look, obviously, scheme strategies and tactics, your competency in the game is important. You can't have a guy coming out there and, like, lining up in the wing tee and just running the football, but, you know, like we used to when I was in Pop Warner. Obviously, you can't do that. But – so you need a certain level of competency, and you have to be able to evaluate guys based off of that. But the thing that is the hardest for people to really do and understand and know about coaches and what and is how they relate to players and communicate to players and bring along guys who are 21, 22, 23 years old from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different, you know, socioeconomic backgrounds, family situations, have different stresses going on in their lives when they leave the facility, all kinds of different stuff. How can they bring all that together, keep all these guys moving in the same direction, coaching them through their ups and downs, coaching the coaches through their ups and downs, keeping the whole building moving in the same direction where if you're having, again, when you're having success, making sure people aren't kind of all of a sudden just wanting what's good for them, or when you're starting to have you know some 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 downfalls that you have all kinds of people backstabbing the organization and doing stuff that isn't good for the organization behind your back, how do you get all those all those different areas to stay behind you, or rather just walk in lockstep with you and stay on the same path and not have it go sideways? How do you recognize when you have a guy who can do that? You can't recognize that looking at GSIS or stats pass and looking out how many yards per attempt their quarterback's averaging. So, yeah, there's no question that those are the things that are the hardest to assess. I mean, every cut, it's funny, you know, we keep coming back to Kyle. When we talked to him uh, before that um, Buffalo it was the game, Bills game. Yeah, when they had moved, they had just gotten to Arizona. And he was saying, you know, one of the first questions that every owner asks when you're getting hired and getting interviewed to be a head coach is how, how do we build a culture? How do we build a championship culture? How do you build the culture? What's the secret? He said, everybody just wants this, you know, this absolutely ironclad question. He's like, there is no ironclad, like, answer to that. There is no one size fits all to that. But he had a great answer about that. He said, you know what? If you find enough people there, who really come to the realization that I don't want to do anything else but football. This is what I want to do. You have a pretty good shot because those guys will do, will be the ones who truly are first in the building. They want to hang around the building. They don't want to leave the building. They're not going to compromise their ability to play the game when they go home by hanging out all night, smoking weed, doing drugs, chasing women, doing stupid stuff. And they're going to be back at that facility the next day, and they're going to want to be around their guys. They're going to be accountable to their guys. They're going to want to play hurt because they don't want to come off the field. All those things. And he said himself, during the pandemic, when the pandemic first hit and everything started getting locked down, he said it was cool for a couple of days, a couple of weeks. You play some golf. You know, you're at home with the kids and the wife. Everybody's happy. You know, oh, this is not so bad. Then he said after a couple of weeks, he's like, damn, I miss football. Like, I miss it. And that's that's what you want. That's what builds culture. So how do you find the guy? Okay, how do you truly find the guy as a head coach or as a player? Who, I mean, John, I mean, you know this, right? When you ask him, you interview, interview a kid at, uh, at the Combine, what are the things that are most important to you? God, family, football. You know, that's usually the answer, right? In that order. Hey, 
Got family football. It's like, okay, all right, what's really important to you? Tell me. Working out. That's that's what, yeah, I mean, that's what you're trying to figure out. That's the kind of thing that you're trying to figure out. And it, it was it was neat this year. Like when you when you talk to guys like Kyle, you talk to guys like Sean McDermott, um, you talk to guys like Sean and Brandon Staley and uh, Mike Tomlin and look, Kevin Stefanski. I mean, these, these guys, I mean, Wink Martindale at Baltimore, these guys are just, I mean, these are all names of guys. I mean, Stefanski and Tomlin aren't going anywhere, obviously. But like Martindale's going to be up for a head coach. Dayball's going to be up for a head coach. I mean, all these guys, you, you, I, I've been able to talk to them and talk about like just what, what does the game mean to them? These guys are all lifers, man. This, that's all they want to do. And quite honestly, they don't want to learn anything else. They don't want to learn how to do something else. They just want the game and need the game. And not and not in a bad way. Not in if I don't play football, I'm just going to go lay you know lay out in the street and shrivel up. But they need the game, and I think that's what you're. That's really what that's really what separates the you know the the average from the good, the good from the great, the great from the unique. It's how much do you need it? How much? How much? If you didn't have it, would you be okay without 